Welcome to the Chicory's Maintenance video series. This video series focuses on the why and the how of the maintenance done aboard Chicory. This time, replacing the vibration dampener on the main engine. So the very first thing you need to do is lock the engine. And uh, this is showing on my configuration. My bell housing is probably a little bit different than yours. But uh, you can see that there's a top dead center finder uh, in the back of the engine. And I simply rotated the engine while Tracy uh, put pressure on this screwdriver until she found the hole in the flywheel to lock it. And then we just taped it in position so that I could crank on the bolts on the front of the engine without rotating the engine. So uh, this is an explanation of how to take off the vibration dampener. Uh, your engine's going to be different than mine, of course, so I'm not going to show the whole disassembly part in the beginning, but I have made this plexi shield that uh, protects my belt. So I'm going to take that off, I'm going to remove the batteries, I'm going to remove my uh, hydraulic stabilizer pump and the alternator and uh, get all of the belts that hold the vibration dampener on, and then I will do another uh, section on the video. Okay, so I've removed the alternator belt, which also goes over the circulating pump, and that's the two uh, belts that engage the actual vibration dampener pulley. My uh, stabilizer pump has what's called a power takeoff, which is basically just some pulleys that are bolted to the front of the vibration dampener, and I'm gonna remove this now, because um, that's the next step. Okay, so I've taken off the power takeoff, which is that pulley assembly, and uh, that was held on with um, four bolts. And inside uh, the vibration dampener, there's a three quarter inch bolt um, with this huge washer, super thick washer that holds on the vibration dampener. Um, so it's a three quarter inch socket that holds this on. Um, I simply used a breaker bar and it was two quick pulls and it broke loose. So for me, each time I replace this, getting that bolt off has been very easy. The next step uh, that I'm gonna show you is this puller, and I can give you a link to it. Um, it is an OTC 522 uh, gear and pulley puller. And what I'm gonna do is take the bolts that held on the um, PTO, they're gonna go through this and screw in to the front of the vibration dampener. It's gonna hold this on, and then I have a thread that's gonna go in there and will pull off the vibration dampener. And I'll show you that shortly once I put everything on. So you can see that I put the gear puller on. I have the two bolts in, and what I did is I hand screwed it in and uh, moved this back and forth gently to make sure that I was completely centered uh, in the pilot hole that's inside the crankshaft. And I also took a little WD-40 and sprayed it on the threads just to make it thread in. And I only have this hand tight now. Um, I'm gonna use a torque wrench only because it happens to be the longest uh, leverage socket wrench I have. I'm gonna put it on the end and I'm just gonna start tightening the gear puller. about a half inch out right now. Now it's getting super easy to lit. I think it might be loose. Guess I can do a little bit more. I think that's loose, let me see. There we go. And it's off. So I uh, obviously have the vibration dampener off. I took a toothbrush and some Fantastic and cleaned up everything and now I'm gonna put the new one back on. And it's just a simple matter of looking at the key, lining it up, slide it on, and then I'm gonna put uh, the bolt back in and start threading it in. So I hand tightened the um, big thick washer and the bolt that I'd showed you earlier. And then it's just a matter of putting your socket on there. And you can see I'm just ratcheting it and it's just, slowly pulls the vibration dampener in. Um, 
and then we're going to torque it down to 136, uh, 135 foot pounds uh, after using some Loctite. Uh, I'm going to continue doing that and then I'll check back in. Okay, so you saw me drawing the vibration dampener in. I drew it in until it was completely seated uh, nice and well, and then I backed the bolt back out. Um, I didn't want to put Loctite on it until I had it completely seated. So then I'm just going to put Loctite on the threads. And then I have that washer still in there. Thread it in there. And use the socket. Bring it in the rest of the way. And then I have my torque gauge set at 135 pound, foot pounds. I'm going to ratchet it to go the right way. Thirty-five foot pounds. It's back on. Uh, let me stress that this is not part of the process that I'm suggesting you do. I'm just showing you what I am doing. Um, I've watched a bunch of videos lately where the quality of parts being manufactured is just deplorable. People talking about getting new rotors on their trucks and them shattering right away just because the castings are so bad. I believe this part is very good. However, um, there are specifications that they say it must um, uh, adhere to to be in, in spec. Out of round has to be within 60 thousandths and the face needs to be within 60 thousandths and the pulley needs to be within two thousandths. So I've hooked up my dial indicator on the uh, engine and I'm going to rotate uh, 360 degrees on this surface, on this surface, and on this surface so that I know exactly what it is. And if in 2,000 miles I start to feel a vibration, I'll have a reference what it was when I installed it and I'll know that even if I haven't re reached the deadline of having to replace it at five years or 4,500 miles, or hours rather, that I can test it and be confident. I'm gonna show you just a little bit of assembly just to show you some of the tips and tricks I use to make it easier. Uh, I have a belt tensioner in between the uh, circulating pump and the alternator and I've got it cranked down. It's hard to see here, I'm sure, so I put another one out here that you can see. And it's basically just a turnbuckle that spreads these apart and puts tension on the belt. And then I use a Gates uh, Cricut gauge and it simply put that around your finger and then you put it on the belt until it clicks and then you can read how much tension you have on this scale. And for this particular belt, which is a Gates Fleet Runner, which is the best belt you can get, um, you install it at 140 pounds of tension, and then when you tighten up all the bolts on your alternator and let the turnbuckle off, it shouldn't be less than 105 pounds of tension. And once again, I will check that after I take off the uh, belt tensioner to test the tension of the belt. So the vibration damper has been installed and we're test running it right now. Uh, we're at fast idle 1,000 